The process of hacking goes something like this. Find your target, do your research, find a way in, and then cover your track. While this seems very simple, it's notoriously difficult to do. So how did some of the world's most wanted hackers find out these exploits and vulnerabilities without step-by-step -step instructions? Some of these hackers wanted fame, some of them wanted money, some of them just wanted to improve the world. And even though their motivations differed in the technologies that they used, there is a common thread that runs not only through these hackers, but essentially everyone that is at the top of their craft. Before I go straight into the process that these hackers use and the mindset and the behind these, I'm going to take you through a journey through the lives of the most notorious hackers. What I find will surprise let me introduce you to Kevin Mitnick. Kevin Mitnick is probably one of the most famous hackers and he began his journey as a teenager when he became fascinated by the capabilities of computers. It is said he learned to bypass the controls at his high school in order to play games. He quickly became adept at breaking into systems and then using his skills for petty crimes, such as making calls without paying. Over the years, Kevin Mitnick skills evolved and included stealing proprietary software from major companies, eavesdropping on conversations held over cellular phones, and wiretapping long-distance telephone systems. He gained entry into computer systems that stored confidential information, such as social security numbers and credit card records. And these criminal act earned him a reputation as master of deception and landed him in prison. During his time behind bars, Mitnick developed numerous sophisticated methods of infiltrating closed networks and assessing sensitive data without being detected. In 1989, he illegally assessed the Digital Equipment Corporation's computer network and stole their source code. This promoted the FBI to investigate him further. Years later, in 1995, authorities arrested arrested Mitnick in Raleigh, North Carolina, after he tapped into the Pacific Bell's voicemail computers and gained access to over 20,000 accounts. After pleading guilty to seven counts of fraud and illegal wiretapping, he was sentenced to 46 months in prison, followed by three years of supervised release. To this day, he is still monitored very closely by law enforcement, but he has turned himself around. He actually started a company called No4B. Second world's most wanted hacker is Adrian Lamo, also called the homeless hacker because a lot of the time he was actually just homeless and drifting from place to place. He first gained reputation in the early 2000s for breaking into several high profile computer networks including Yahoo and the New York Times. He was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1981. His father was a computer programmer and Lama began learning about computers at a really young age. He started breaking into computer systems when he was just 14 years old. In 2003, Lamo pled guilty to federal charges related to hacking. However, and in recent years before he passed away, he did help companies assess their cybersecurity risks and develop more secure systems. Once he had control, Lamo alleged to have changed employee passwords and assessed confidential information from personal profiles. He proceeded to transmit hundreds of thousands of documents containing highly sensitive information from databases belonging to Microsoft, the New York Times, American Online, and Yahoo. This is what got him caught up and the Department of Justice did arrest him for this. He later on was also known for reporting Chelsea Manning and the theft of classified information to the FBI. The next notoriously well-known in the community is Adi Shamir. And Adi Shamir began his journey as a hacker while studying mathematics and computer systems at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in the 1970s. Co-authored RSA algorithm in 1977, one of the most popular cryptographic algorithms today. In addition to the RSA, Adi Shamir also broke 
Merkel Hellman knapsack crypto system, visual cryptography, and the twirl and twinkle factoring device. According to legend, he actually started breaking into computers at his school. After being caught and reprimanded, he decided to use his skills in more constructive ways. The next most notorious hacker on this list is Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon at the time was a Scottish computer hacker and was accused of the biggest military computer hack of all times way back in the year 2002. Since then, there's been way bigger hacks, but again, at the time, it was advanced. He was charged with hacking into 97 United States military and NASA computers and allegedly caused over $900,000 in damage. This included the deletion of critical files from operation systems and disabling of critical defense networks. In addition to deleting essential files and disabling networks, McKinnon changed user account passwords so administrators could not log in. He left a taunting message on one system reading, your security is crap. McKinnon also copied confidential data onto his computer, which he then made available publicly via file sharing sites. In December 2012, the British Home Secretary announced that McKinnon would not be extradited because he had autism and he could not receive a fair trial in America. The next notorious hacker on this list is Jonathan James. And he was a teenage hacker that gained a reputation way back in the 1990s. At just 15 years old, he hacked into NASA. He was the first juvenile to be convicted of a felony under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Later on in 2001, he actually continued and was arrested for hacking into the United States Department of Defense Networks. He had expert knowledge of coding and gained access to databases with confidential information. The next most notorious hacker on this group isn't so much a single person, but a single hive mind, and that is Anonymous. It's one of the most well-known hacker groups in the world. The group is known for its protests against organizations and governments and distributed denial of service attacks against websites. Anonymous has been involved in many different campaigns and operations over the years, ranging from more traditional online attacks to coordinated denial of service attacks on large organizations and governments. One of their most well-known campaigns was Operation Payback, which targeted companies such as Visa and MasterCard that had chosen to stop processing payments for WikiLeaks. Despite its large reputation and its fame, it still remains a mystery to many people, and not a lot is known about it or about the people in Anonymous. What is known is that Anonymous uses a technique called the hive mind in which people can learn from each other much quicker than they could if they were solo hackers on their own trying to figure it out. The feedback loop is much quicker and in this approach they can find solutions very quickly than just one type of person. The next world's most wanted hacker is Kevin Poulsen. His most famous hack was the 412 hack incident which began in 1995 when he hacked into various Pacific Bell telephone systems to change billing information and make free long distance calls. Initially, he was able to access the systems through insecure modems with simple passwords. He then used the access to manipulate systems such as AT and T. He was sentenced to two years in prison and after his release, he became a professional hacker and using his skills to steal more information. He hacked into the phone system of Los Angeles radio station and took over the airwaves, making a prank call that lasted for more than five minutes. The next most notorious hacker on this list is Albert Gonzalez. He was a hacker accused of masterminding the theft of over 170 million credit card and ATM numbers from 2005 to 2007. He bought his first computer at age 12 and hacked into NASA by age 14. He was also accused of being the mastermind behind a group called Shadow Crew that trafficked 1.5 million stolen credit card and ATM card numbers. The Secret Service dubbed their investigation Operation Firewall and believed that up to 4.3 million was stolen by Shadow Crew sharing its information with other groups entitled Carter Planet and Dark Profits. The next hacker 
on this is going outside of America and his name is Vladimir Levin. He was a Russian hacker who gained his reputation for his unauthorized access to Citibank's computer systems. He transferred about $10.7 million from several customer accounts to his own bank account in Russia. He was eventually caught after attempting to withdraw some of the money at St. Petersburg, although it is believed that he may have taken more money, the amount accounted by authorities. So those are some of the world's most wanted and most popular hackers that have e ever existed. So you probably are like, well, how did they learn how to hack? What was it? Well, after going into the backgrounds of all of these, I noticed some certain traits that they all have. And there are actually a lot of traits that other people at the top of their craft also have. The first common thread among all of these hackers are their mindset. All of them are were extremely curious and often obsessed with what they were doing. If you read into the biographies of anyone, say Van Gogh, or even if you watch some interviews with Mr. Beast, the, the world's most famous YouTuber, they're all very obsessed and they only think about that one thing and they're so focused on it. Just obsessively studying YouTube. Like if a video got 40 million views, figuring out why and doing that just literally tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of times to the point where, you know, I was basically just kind of a, a YouTube loser and this is back when YouTube wasn't cool. The next common theme that all of these hackers had was that they mastered the foundations of the technology at the time. Technologies are going to change throughout time and none of them had step-by-step -step instructions. A lot of them were in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s when resources were very limited. They knew the foundations so well, better than the people who were creating the networks and the systems that they were able to find vulnerabilities. And so they mastered the foundation and they were able to think creatively about problems and find things that other people wouldn't have found without that knowledge. Another common theme among all of these hackers was that they really enjoyed the process. They really just enjoyed the thrill and the fun of hacking. They turned it into essentially a game. If you want to get good at anything, you do have to enjoy the process of getting better and not just the results of what you're going to get once you get good because you'll quit long before you reach competency enough to like be good at it. The next theme was all of them self-studied. The only hacker here that went to formal education was Adi Shamir. Most of them didn't have formal education and they learned it on their own by going to groups and organizations, and reading books and then forums and all of that stuff to really learn it on their own. Even if you go to college, you're going to still have a huge skill gap because most of what they teach in college is largely theory and not really working knowledge. Another common theme among this is that they masterminded with hackers in the field. People think all of these people did things on their own, but really they learned from other people and they communicated and spoke to other people. For instance, Anonymous has the hive mind and that is full of multiple people and they're able to learn from each other and solve problems much quicker than they would if they were on their own. While you can get good at something on your own, I really think having a mastermind group to bounce ideas off just gives you that feedback that, and you can make progress probably five times more quickly than you could if you were just going it on your own. Those are the main components on how the world's most wanted hackers learned their craft. They were obsessed and then they just learned the foundations and kept doing it for such a long time that they got better than anyone else because they really liked it and they turned it into essentially a game. I hope you liked this video. If you're interested in landing a job in cybersecurity, I do have a playlist right here. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.